Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. It is Twilight Friday. We have nine races to show you, and Mr. Pete Aiello will give you the track and weather conditions. We start the Friday program with a fast main track, a firm turf course, a warm summer day, temperatures in the 90s here this afternoon. First of nine over the turf at five furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of $30,000. Scratch the nine, time will tell. A field of eight, the favorite was the eight, Grand Malbec. Racing at Gulfstream. Good start on the outside for Grand Malbec, who fires to the top. Scotus Care comes away in the top flight, tries to save his inside spot. Away in third is Southern Sea. Particularity is next with Royalty Salvatore, then can't take it with you in Flying Liberty. And the early trailer is Son of Greatness. They speed to the far turn. Sitting up top, the leader is Ground Malbec by a length and a quarter. Toward the rail, Scotus Care is still in stride with Southern Sea second and third. Working between horses is can't take it with you. Royalty Salvatore is at the rail. Particularity is three wide, then flying. Flying Liberty and Son of Greatness as they run to the top of the stretch. 22 and 2 for a casual opening quarter speed. Grand Malbec maintains control, leads by two. Scotus Care is set down driving toward the rail and Flying Liberty down the center. Can't take it with you with Royalty Salvador. Grand Malbec still going. Grand Malbec by three and a half. Flying Liberty getting ground. He's up into second. Time is running out. Grand Malbec with a stutter step, but he's hanging on. Grand Malbec wins a length and a quarter. Second was Flying Liberty, third was Southern Sea, and 57 flat. Number eight, Grand Malbec is officially a different racehorse on the turf while sprinting here at Gulfstream Park. As he's sharp right now and goes gate to wire in the first of the day under Amis Ayel Jaramillo for trainer Victor Barboza Jr. Both of those guys looking for a title in their respective categories. Grand Pollo Stable, the winning owner of the son of Buckethead. To the second race, start of the early pick four at six furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of $30,000. A field of seven signed on. Favorites included one, Smash Williams, and six, Accumulator. And they're off. From the center, Mai Chinamato very fast early and opens up a length and a half while dropping over to the rail. Smash Williams away in second, Darwish is third with four freedoms, two back to Accumulator, then it's the comebacker, Fort Liberty, and forecasting is last of all, as it's the fleet-footed Mai Chinamato who has the lead. Mai Chinamato to the half-mile point, a length and a quarter better than Darwish second. Smash Williams third, four freedoms is fourth. Gap of four to Accumulator, then comes forecasting in Fort Liberty. The opening quarter, robust, 22 seconds flat as they speed around the four turn, three furlongs from home. Mai Chinamato faces a threat from Darwish Darwish on the outside, and Darwish, without being asked for his best, now takes a narrow lead. My Chinamato hangs right with him second, two back to third, four freedoms. Smash Williams is driven with a rail run fourth, five ahead of Accumulator, then forecasting with a quarter of a mile left to go. 45 and one for the opening half mile. Darwish comes away with a narrow lead. My Chinamato, dead game and fighting on second, three back to four freedoms, and Smash Williams, less than an eighth of a mile to go, and Darwish is kicking clear. Darwish now by three. Four Freedoms is up into second. The battle's on for third. Darwish in front. Second is Four Freedoms. Third, my Chinamato. And fourth was Smash Williams. Then Fort Liberty Accumulator and Forecasting. 111 and four. Number two, Darwish gets the money in impressive fashion. He repeats as a winning maiden last time out. He takes winners no problem here today. Under jockey Amisael Jaramillo, who sweeps the early double. This one for Gilberto Zerpa in the Stoldi Stable. Darwish is son of the very game competitor. Fappy's Notebook scores in the second. Second was number three, four freedoms. Third was the five, my Chinamato. Back now for the third race of the day over the turf at about seven and a half furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of $10,000. Scratch the three, Night Storm, a field of 11. Favorite was the two, Ortega. And they're off. Missing the start a bit was Nile Princess, three lengths last. 
The Trotter girl was away well, so was Passionate Girl in between horses Artiga. Far outside, Don't Talk Back is trying to work over and the charge to the first turn. Passionate Girl comes away with the lead and drops over to the rail to lead the way by a length. Up on the outside, Don't Talk Back is now second from between horses Cosita Rica third. Under the rain is at the rail in fourth, two and a half back to Ortega. The Great gallops along fifth. Mose Jenny is next toward the rail, then it's Ali Cruz. Stretch of three and a half to Natrona Girl, who's a length and a half better than Be Sure Lisa. Second last inside Alex's party, and after a slow start, the trailer is Nile Princess. 23 and 2 for the opening quarter speed. Down the back stretch they go. Miguel Vasquez trying to harness the speed of Passionate Girl, who leads the way a length and a quarter. From the outside and now second, don't talk back. Parked at the rail, third is under the rain. Then Cosita Rica and Moe's Ginny. The favorite Ortega still ridden quietly with about five lengths to make up and less than three furlongs to do it. Three back to Natrona Girl, who gets underway past Ali Cruz. At the rail, it's Nile Princess from between horses, Be Sure Lisa. Alex's party is last as they round the far turn. Nobody's confronted Passionate Girl yet. She leads the way. Here's Under the Rain making a move, and on the outside, Ortega's left go for a four-wide assault. Natrona Girl six or seven deep, and they're at the top of the stretch. Ortega set down for the drive, and now overhauls the top pair to take a clear advantage. Into the clear, Mose Ginny's going to try to track her down, then Under the Rain, Natrona Girl, and Nile Princess. Mose Ginny indeed taking on Ortega, and Mose Ginny is on to the front. It's Mose Ginny and Lionel Reyes to spring the upset and win by a length and a half. Ortega second under the rain third, then Nile Princess in a photo with Natrona Girl. Number two, Ortega got a picture perfect trip, but she was outrun in the final eighth of a mile by number four, Moe's Jenny, the daughter of Uncle Moe, springs the upset under jockey Lionel Reyes for owner trainer Angel Kiros. Second two, Ortega, third was the one under the rain. To the fourth race we go in the start of the Rainbow Six, more than a million dollars in total in the Rainbow Six today. This race at four and a half furlongs to the first finish line. Maiden claimers in for $25,000. Scratch the two and 11, a field of nine. Favorites included the six, Venezuelan Pegasus, and the 10, Bunster. And they're off. From the center, Gator 52, like a rocket, and right to the front. Toward the inside, first time a Regan's heart has speed, and she's up to challenge. These two fly away. Two and a half lengths clear of Venezuelan Pegasus, who's on to be third. Bunster in the red takes over fourth. My People Sing is back to fifth. A gap of two and a half to Majestic Luna. Then comes Nomad. It's three more to second last running Sir Jack. Tommy Tuesday is last of all as they round the far turn. Regan's heart and Eduardo Nunez to the top of the stretch with the lead. On the outside in Gator 52. 52 second, Venezuelan Pegasus third. The rest not of consequence, led by My People Sing getting around Bunster, and they're at the top of the stretch. They better hurry up if they want to catch Regan's heart. Turns first on a three-length lead. Venezuelan Pegasus in with a chance on the outside second. Back to third and Gator 52. Less than an eighth of a mile to go. Venezuelan Pegasus trying to track down Regan's heart. Regan's heart needs more. Venezuelan Pegasus surging. It's a photo finish. Really tight from this vantage point, it's Venezuelan Pegasus and Regan's Heart in 53 and 3. Tight finish in today's fourth race, but in the end, the Orleana Farms Venezuelan Pegasus was up to win it, giving Amisael Jaramillo three of the first four races today. This one for Alexis Delgado, and again, the owners and breeders, the Orleana Farm. Son of Fusaichi Pegasus scores in race four. Second, number three, Regan's Heart ahead of number five, My People Sing, ran third. We move now to the fifth race of the day, one mile over the turf. Maidens of the claiming variety and for a price tag of $25,000. Scratch the 9, 10, 11, and 12. Heavily favored, number four, Great R's Resolve. And they're up. Slow getaway for loose note. Quick getaway for Coniston from down toward the inside, who's heading off for the early lead from Tufa, who moves to be second. Tucking in as Great R's resolve as Spring Joy tries to work over. Down at the fence goes Angelino to race about five lengths off the pace setter. Yeezus stars on his outside. Two back to Loose Note, and at the back of the field is Christmas Treat. It's Coniston, who's loose up top under Nick Juarez, leads the way by two and a half. Tufa's second, Great R's Resolve is parked at the rail third. Spring Joy is back to fourth, followed fifth by Angelino, then Yeezus Star and Loose Note. Still at the back is Christmas Treat. 24 and 2 for the opening quarter speed. Coniston controls his own fate. He leads the way at the five furlong mark by a length and a quarter. 
Up on the outside, Tufa still second. Gradar's Resolve is favored and down toward the rail. A neck in front of Spring Joy, who races from fourth. And it's Angelino and Yeezus Star. Three wide in losing position is Loose Note. Christmas Treat remains last of the eight with less than half a mile to run. Into the far turn, they go through a 49-second opening half mile. It's Coniston, who still has the lead. On the outside, two for second. Gradar's Resolve patiently handled toward the rail. Spring Joy gets started three wide and on the attack. Then Angelino and Yeezus star. Christmas Treat is out of last as they run to the top of the stretch. Tufa making Coniston work. That's good news for Gradar's Resolve, who needs a way out. Far outside, and Angelino, and they're at the top of the stretch. With the lead now, Tufa sticks a neck in front. Coniston battles back toward the inside second spring. Spring Joy and Gradar's Resolve getting loose down the outside. Angelino. Tufa has the lead for Miguel Vasquez. Gradar's Resolve takes a late run at him. Here's the wire. It's going to get close. It's too close to call. Too tight there. Bob of the noses between Gradar's Resolve and Tufa in 137 and 4. Well, if you back number four, Gradar's Resolve, you were home to win it, but he only was in front at the wire. He was never in front before the finish but was in front at the finish. And that's what matters, and that's what pays. At three to five, Tyler Gaffleone and the son of Gradar for the money for drawing away stable and Safi Joseph Jr. Five, Tufa with a super good try while second, ahead of number one, Angelino, who ran third. Time for a commercial break. Still to come, the late pick four, right after this. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Zephyr blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Odds of again has won. Go Zephyr kicking clear. Judy the beauty. Back now for race number six on the program. Maidens of the special weight variety. These are fillies and mares three and up. Facing for a $46,000 purse. Field of 10 signed on. Off time favorite was number six, Incredible Grace. And they're off. Pretty shady fires out to take the early lead. Here's CC's Cup of Tea moving up to challenge. And the first timer, CC's Cup of Tea, sharp early and takes over. Pretty shady is second. Bring Joy is third. Country Strong at the rail is now fourth. And then between horses goes Ultimate Challenge. Incredible Grace is out wide. Wider is Grand Tap. She's on the improve. She's now fourth while four wide. Gap of three to underestimate. She's dropped better than nine lengths off the lead. Risky, risky, risky at the back of the pack with Miha Bella as they round the far turn. CeCe's Cup of Tea hounded on the far outside by Pretty Shady and from between horses by Bring Joy. They're going quickly. Grand Tap is now racing on from fourth. Improving is the favorite. Incredible Grace. She'll need a way out from her pocket, but she's working into the clear now. Three lengths ahead of Ultimate Challenge and they're at the top of the stretch. On the outside, Pretty Shady for a narrow lead toward the rail. CeCe's Cup of Tea battles back into the clear while wide is Incredible Grace. Running home is underestimate with an eighth of a mile to go. Still many chances here, but but incredible Grace and Tabagaf Leon sweep to the lead. Barn Buddy underestimate, charging hard and up into second. Pletcher's won two. Incredible Grace will win it. Underestimate was second. CC's Cup of Tea third, then Pretty Shady in 1 12. Five. Todd Pletcher runs 1 2 in today's sixth race. The win goes to number six, Incredible Grace, under Tyler Gaffleon for back to back scores. Todd Pletcher runs 1 2 in the race. He trained the daughter of Medaglia Doro for trainer owner Bob LaPenta. Second two underestimate, and third was number three, CeCe's Cup of Tea. To the seventh race now on the start of the late pick three on turf at about seven and a half furlongs. Violence optional claiming runners with a field reduced by three. Scratch the six, 10, and 11, eight to the gate. The favorites included three, Adonis Creed, and seven, JoJo's Dream. And they're off. Minute Madness was away alertly. Adonis Creed showing his customary early speed. Here goes JoJo's Dream on the outside. Trying to get over as Fafa with the green most are going to be spun five or six deep in the run to the first turn. Adonis Creed on the inside. JoJo's Dream on the outside. Their heads apart for the lead. Elk Camp gets a good tracking spot third off the top two. The green moster has to use some speed to get over from his high draw. Then back to the inside. It's Yager. Fafa third last. Minute Madness second last. And the trailer is local hero. Into the back.
backstretch they go. It's Adonis Creed with the advantage, three parts of a length. JoJo's Dream on the outside keeps the pressure on. Second, two and a half back to third, and Elk Camp. Elk Camp getting a great spot behind the top two. Fourth is the Green Moster, four ahead of Yager, then to the outside, Local Hero. Second last minute, Madness, and Fafa drops the trail through an opening quarter in an energetic 22 and four inside half a mile from home. It's a protracted speed duel up front with Adonis Creed holding an inside edge and a narrow lead. JoJo's Dream on the outside is second. Box seat trip for Elk Camp third. On the inside, Yager tries to get underway with the Green Moster back to fifth. Local Hero is sixth and in range, six lengths off the lead. The back markers will have to do better. Fafa and Minute Madness as they run to the top of the stretch. JoJo's Dream puts away Adonis Creed, has to deal with Elk Camp on the outside. The Green Moster has been wide on both turns, but he still has momentum and ducking to the inside is Yager. Final eighth of a mile. JoJo's Dream has the lead. Yager keyed up toward the rail and coming after him second. Here's Yager to take a narrow lead. JoJo's Dream right back at him. Yager, JoJo's Dream. It's Yager in front. Yager wins narrowly. JoJo's Dream second. Local hero third. Then the Green Moster and El Camp. Number five, Yager. Game and so always as he gets the rail run and gets a narrow victory. Your jockey Sebastian Saez for Yvonne Belsor, who continues to have a solid summer season for owner Bruno Schickendanz. Second seven, JoJo's Dream. Third was number four, Local Hero. Time for commercial break. Still to come, the Friday feature. It's a good one. Allowance horses around two turns right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best. Why July? A top-ranked yearling sale by percentage of grade one winners, percentage of graded stakes winners, and percentage of two-year-old winners sold. Now with even more selection and more sire power. Recent graduates include grade one victor, Dream Tree. Selected sales, superior results. We find future Hat Creek stars at Phasing July. Where will you be? The Phasing Tipton July sale, July 10th in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? Back now for race number eight on the program. First half of the late daily double and the Friday feature. An allowance optional claiming event with a field of six. Off time favorites included the two High Riverside and the five Royal Holiday. They're at the post and they're off. Far outside, Diamond Bachelor away well. Zayas is riding DeLand for the lead and the rail and he'll get both in the charge for the first turn. It will be DeLand who sets up shop unopposed up front. Diamond Bachelor is up into second. High Riverside is now third. Royal Holiday on the outside fourth. Back to fifth is Gray Bow. And at the back of the field is long shot Millionaire Runner. Around the first turn they go. And up front, it's DeLand in front to length and a quarter. Comfortable doing it. From the outside, Diamond Bachelor is second. Royal Holiday is taking stronghold third. From the inside and racing in fourth is High Riverside. Out the rail, Gray Bow taps on the brakes. As DeLand takes a funny step up front, Zayas trying to get him to straighten himself back up. Just wanted to know what exactly happened there, but DeLand has maintained his advantage. He leads uh, by a length and a quarter length now from a 24 second opening quarter speed. Racing in second is Diamond Bachelor. Racing in third is Royal Holiday. At the rail in fourth is High Riverside. Then Millionaire Runner. And the trailer is Gray Bow. So they went 48 seconds for the opening half mile. Diamond Bachelor kept the pressure on DeLand, who's now going to have to go for more as DeLand is under a ride to hold the lead. Diamond Bachelor on the outside makes him go early second. Royal Holiday is back to third. High Riverside, veteran campaigner, close enough if good enough. He's on the short turnaround, but he's in range only three lengths off the lead with less than five sixteenths to go to the first finish line. Zayas working overtime on DeLand. He's at, on front, but he has High Riverside, who's going to get through on the fence. DeLand turns for home after three quarters in 112 and one and he has the lead toward the rail high riverside takes a run at him second back to third and royal holiday 16th to go high riverside and deland deland's fighting but high riverside is too good it's high riverside deland right back at him high riverside wins deland second royal holiday third then diamond bachelor and graybo quick turnaround proves a winning move for trainer antonio sano as his horse number two high riverside outruns deland in the final eighth of a mile gets the victory under marcos manessis back in just six days from our racing stable and breeder amy dunn 
Second was Juan DeLand and a good try ahead of the five Royal Holiday who completes the formful try. Ninth and final race over the turf at five furlongs, maiden claimers in for 12,500. A scratch of seven, nine, and 13 leaves us with a field of 10. Two rider changes, Romero Mirage on the eight, Tapate Claire, the 11 Nation USA will be handled by Andre Ramge. And runners away. Nation USA hits the ground running. There goes Iron Throne onto the front. Far outside, Royal Flyer trying to get over. In between horses, that's Shidoshi with Weaponized also not far away as they run to the half-mile point. With the lead, it's Iron Throne, but here's Royal Flyer moving up on the outside to inject some pace into the race. Back to third, Shidoshi moving up to take over fourth now. That's uh, the Nation USA who's on a rebid down inside Crest of Eden. Two back to her running on. I'm a wrecking ball with Weaponized next. Out the back door early, Tapate Claire and Hovento Eo as they run to the top of the stretch. With the lead, it's Iron Throne trying to spring the upset. Royal Flyer, not an easy horse to handle. He's racing on the outside and trying to get into second as Shidoshi splits Horses for Edgar Zayas, and here he comes now. Shidoshi trying to get this big long shot. Iron Throne. Iron Throne has the lead. Shidoshi takes a run at him. Iron Throne and Shidoshi. Shidoshi and Iron Throne. Iron Throne. Bomzoi. Shidoshi second. Crest of Eden third. Weaponized. Finish fourth. Number five, Iron Throne springs a 22 to one upset to close the Friday program as he got the lead and the rail under Relu Gutierrez for trainer Eduardo Esperwa Jr. and owner and breeder SCF. Incorporated. Second, number 10, Shidoshi. Favorite had to settle for a minor reward. No winners in the high five. Carry over with a force out tomorrow, more than $10,000. On the other side of the equation, we had multiple winners in the Rainbow Six. Mandatory return in the Rainbow Six tomorrow, and a carryover going in almost $900,000. And that wraps up Friday's card. Saturday, Summit of Speed Day, 14 races on tap, an 11.55 first race post, mandatory payouts in the Rainbow Six, the Super High Five, and the Late Pick Five. So, boy, what a day to be at Gulfstream Park.